I just received this pocket watch with the name Langdon Davies on the dial from John. Langdon Davies was a large retailer in England. Here's several ads for pocket watches from Langdon Davies. Looks like the store was located on Bristol Street in Birmingham, England. The watch in this ad called The Kickabout looks very similar to the one sent to me. Langdon Davies didn't fabricate watch movements. They purchased them already made and had their name added to the dials. Made for Langdon Davies. Sold in the English market. The dial is in exceptional shape. Other than a lot of dirt particles on it, it's next to perfect. The hands would have been gold at one time, but the plating is worn off. Here on the pendant, there is still faint traces of the silversmith's stamp on it. The bow would have also had the silversmith stamp on it. It's been worn off from years of use. Judging from the wear on the case, it's seen many hours of use. A small dent, several recent scratches on the case from someone attempting to open it with a metal opener. These have a release button that's tough to see if you're unfamiliar with them. It's built right into the pendant. They're not made to open with an opener. Just push the button and it'll release the back. The .935 is the fineness mark showing percent of silver content of the alloy used on this piece. The three bears is the Swiss silversmith hallmark and the S is a silversmith's trademark. Each silversmith had their unique trademark. Each trademark had to be registered to be officially accepted and legal to use. It's got a case serial number of 2568. Someone has used what looks like a vibrating pencil to engrave their name on the back. There's a couple of dates put in from previous repair persons. Inner dust cover reads, Chronometer Lover, 15 jewels, Swiss made. It's heavily scratched most likely from the key, since this is a key wind and key set movement. This is where the designers intended the dust cover to open from. Usually a strong fingernail slid around it will open it without the need to use a steel opener. The silver fineness mark of .935, the three bears hallmark, identify the case as Swiss made between 1888 and 1914, and matching serial number to the back cover of 2568. The case has one small bear hallmark stamped here by the pendant. The balance wheel is free Many different sizes of keys were used on watches.
This one takes a number five. Center arbor is for setting the hands. They move just fine. This arbor is for winding the mainspring. It feels like it's wound tight. The click is located here, just above the key. I'll release the mainspring fully, then disassemble the movement. Get these hands off. Second hand. The case screw and the movement will drop out. Inside of this case is filthy. Needs a good cleaning. Secure it in the movement holder. I'll remove the balance assembly first so it doesn't get damaged. Double check the pallet fork and train wheels to make sure all power is released. pallet bridge pallet and the jewels look good Escape wheel bridge. Dry and dirty. Jewel looks okay, but we'll take a closer look after it's clean. Escape wheel pivots look good. Escape wheel has a lot of rust on it. Now the dial pins. This dial only has two dial feet. Dial is held in with two pins that go through the feet.
remove the dial, I see the dial has 68 scratched onto the back of it. The front plate sure has a lot of dirt on it. Around each dirt speck, it looks like an oil ring or a ring of residue around them. Also some drip type of stains. Almost looks like solvent pooling on it dried there at one time. Our wheel looks good. Minute wheel looks undamaged. The cannon pinning on these are pressed onto a tapered shaft that passes through the center wheel. The tapered shaft will need to be pushed out of the cannon pinion. It's going to need a nudge to break it free from the tapered fit. I'll do this on a staking tool, using this stump to back up the back plate. Might be rust holding it on, so easy does it. The center shaft slides out nice with no damage. Now the spacer washer. And the cannon pinion is undamaged, just as planned. Now the back plate, not looking real clean. This dirty residue is from someone soaking the movement without taking it apart in solvent and calling it a job well done. The black residue is all the dirt particles left behind. It's like loading the movement up with a sediment of fine grinding compound. A sure way to destroy a movement in a short time period. That is if the movement will even run with dry dirt where the oil should be. Well, it looks like another butcher job to clean up after on this one. The center wheel is filthy. You can see where the solvent pooled. It's where the dirt is. The fourth wheel. Third wheel.
mainspring barrel. Just look at this thick powder residue. It's got a Geneva stop mechanism on the mainspring. State of the art technology for the 1800s. Only used on high quality movements. I'll do a hand cleaning first with radical to get most of the residue off. You can see it's a fine dust just laying on the top. Peg all the pivot holes clean. Clean the surface of the jewels. It's really stuck on this click wheel cover. Oh great, backside of click wheel cover is thick with the stuff. Why anyone would treat a nice movement like this is beyond me. Packed in here tight. Each piece is going to need to be cleaned by hand so it doesn't contaminate my cleaning solution. Balance wheel has rust on it. Hands have rust damage on them. Back plate. Lots of rust on the escape wheel. Mainspring Geneva stop mechanism is real dry and covered with dirt residue. Just look at the rust. Center wheel. Backside of click wheel plate. The plates have black dirt specks with some type of staining around each dirt speck. I think these are old oil or grease that broke loose with the solvent wash. Or maybe the solvent had suspended dirt particles in it. They may have floated in and lodged on the plates and stuck there. Crud is caked on each jewel. I guess you could call this a cruddy job. All cleaned. Now to move forward, since all the crud is removed. Now that all the crud is removed, I see this balance staff capsule is broken. It's going to need a new one installed. Here's the new one. It turned out real nice.
Hairspring is rubbing on the balance cock. I'll use these hairspring tools to adjust the spring slightly away from it. This is delicate work. Okay, it's adjusted. Not rubbing anymore. The palette. Palette bridge. Well, it's been running for a week now. Nice strong running movement. Minute wheel, hour wheel, dial, dial holding pins, second hand. Hour hand, minute hand, hand set good without hitting on each other. For all this watch has been through, it's sure a good runner. Looks real nice in the case. The owner didn't want any silver polish to be used on the case, so I cleaned it with dishwashing detergent to degrease it. This left a nice soft patina on it. This is one nice looking watch. 